Prepare for IELTS practice listening tests. Practice listening test 4. Turn to section 1 of practice listening test 4. Section 1. Listen to a conversation between two students, John and Carol. They have a list of the names of authors whose books have been given to the library. They have to classify the authors as writers of cookery, sports or travel books. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 8 on the table. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. The conversation relating to this will be played first. This is a great collection of books, isn't it? Very impressive. Who gave them to us? Apparently the donor was a book reviewer. There are a lot of books about sport. Here's one. My Life in Cricket. Well, that's certainly sports. Who's the author? Peter Adams. He also wrote Journeys Through Spain. Did he? Peter Adams writes books on both sports and travel, so S.T. is written against his name. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 8. This is a great collection of books, isn't it? Very impressive. Who gave them to us? Apparently the donor was a book reviewer. There are a lot of books about sport. Here's one. My Life in Cricket. Well, that's certainly sports. Who's the author? Peter Adams. He also wrote Journeys Through Spain. Did he? Next one is Stephen Bow. He wrote Summer Barbecues, Cooking for Singles, Dinners by Candlelight. Anything else? No. Do you have anything by Pam Campbell? Wanderings in Greece, My Life in Russia, Travels in the Amazon, and Pam Campbell's Guide to a Successful Trip. Oh, sounds like she got around. My next one is C. Ketsik. He has a list of books about football, the World Cup, Heroes of the World Cup, Playing with the Round Ball, Soccer for Everyone. That's enough. He was a one-topic writer. Ari Hussain, however, wrote about cooking and travel. His series of cookbooks is called Living and Cooking in Spain, Living and Cooking in China, Living and Cooking in Brazil. He's been everywhere. I've got a specialist here, Sally Innes on tennis. Here are some of her titles. Improve Your Serve, Tennis for Everyone, Tennis Forever. Meg Jorgensen has three books, one in each category, Cooking for Health, Sport is Good for You and Travelling in Australia. A very talent. Who's next? Bruno Murray. He wrote children's books. A whole series called The Child's Guide Too, and then The Name of the City. Oh, you mean like A Child's Guide to London? Yes, that's right. He seems to have stayed in Europe. Ruby Lee, however, has just one book. It's called The Emerald Isle, and it's all about Ireland. Apparently she went around Ireland on foot. Jim Wells wouldn't like that. His books are all about motor racing. Hmm. Nice photos of old racing cars. Don't you love the goggles on the driver? They do look strange, don't they? I think we're nearly finished. What did Helen Young write? Summer menus. Food for thought. She also did a book of Chinese recipes. Cantonese, I think. OK. That's dealt with the first box. Let's stop for a minute. That is the end of Section 1. You now have some time to check your answers.
turn to Section 2. Section 2. You are going to hear a talk by a student advisor who is inviting new students to a welcoming party. Look at the invitation. Tick if the information is correct or write in the changes. First look at questions 9 to 14. As you listen to the first part of the talk, answer questions 9 to 14. Hello, my name is Dave Burns, and I'm here to tell you about the welcoming party we're having for new students. Unfortunately, the information on your invitation is inaccurate. We didn't have enough time to print new invitations, so I'll have to ask you to make changes. To start with, this isn't a welcoming lunch. It's a dance party. However, the next line is true. The party will be held at Blackwell House. Is everybody comfortable with that? The next line tells you when the party will be. Friday, June 15th at 8pm. But I have good news. The party will end at 11pm. As a result of this later end to the party, the bus will go later too. So, it should read... Free transport to the student hostel is available, leaving Blackwell House at 11.30. And of course, other students may attend, and all students must have their student ID card with them. I hope you can come to the welcoming party. It's a really good way to get to know other students and to learn what it's like to live in this city and to study here. Just one final change... Please let us know by Thursday if you can come. Now listen while Dave Burns gives instructions for students who are going to travel by car to the party. First look at questions 15 to 18. Write no more than three words for each answer. Some of you may prefer to travel by car, but I have to warn you about some changes to the roads. You will find there is a lot of new road work on Smith Street. The work will not finish for a long time, so we can be sure that Smith Street will be a problem. If you are coming from the city you will be able to travel easily until you get to Blackwell Street, just near the college. As you know, Blackwell Street is very long. You should avoid the corner of Blackwell Street and Jones Avenue, because they are laying telephone cable. However, you can take a detour and avoid Blackwell Street altogether. The best thing to do is to pass the roundabout and take the first road on your left, which is Brown Crescent. Brown Crescent will lead you into the college grounds, so that's easy. I hope everyone has a great time. Bring your friends, and we'll see you on Friday. Oh, one final reminder. It's best to use the side door. The front door may be locked at 7, so come to the side. See you on Friday. That is the end of Section 2. You will now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to Section 3. Section 3. In this section you will hear a discussion between two students who have to describe a lawn sprinkler for part of their general science course. A lawn sprinkler is a machine designed to water gardens and lawns. 
In the first part of the discussion, the students are talking about the different parts of the sprinkler. First look at questions 19 to 23. Note the example that has been done for you. Now listen to the conversation and label the parts of the sprinkler on the diagram. Choose from the box. There are more words in the box than you will need. Hello Scott. I believe you're going to be my partner for this practical session. Have you got the model set up? Yes, uh, it's right here. The instructions say we have to describe it first and label the diagram. I've started from where the water enters the machine. Uh, the water enters through a hose pipe and then it turns a water wheel. You can see where the wheel is marked by an arrow pointing upwards. It's called a water wheel because it's designed so the water will catch against the wheel. This action spins a series of gears. How are you going to describe the gears? There are two worm gears, one vertical and one horizontal. The horizontal worm gear drives a circular gear. That gear is connected to a crank which changes the motion. The crank is already labelled. Do you see the two white arrows? I see. Okay. The water has passed across the water wheel. Then what? Okay. Um, then you could say the water passes through the spray tube. Yes, I see. And the water is then spread over the lawn through holes at the top of the spray tube. How are you going to describe the base? How about this? The sprinkler stands on a base consisting of two metal tubes which join at a hinge at one end and continue into a plastic moulding at the other. That's certainly starting at the bottom. Do you want to mention that there's no water in the base? I don't think that's necessary. If you look at the diagram, it's easy to see that the only metal tube to contain water is the spray tube. You can actually see the water coming out of it. Now listen while Linda and Scott's instructor, Mark Stewart, talks to them. Answer questions 24 to 29. Hello Scott, Linda. I'm glad I caught you before class. Did you know about the change in the examination schedule? Change? Yes, the last day of examinations for your group will be December 2nd instead of November 29th. Is that definite? We were told they'd be on November 26th and then there was a rumour they'd be on December the 1st. The schedule's gone to the printer. There can be no changes. It's definitely December 2nd. Mm, that's a relief. I'm going to the US on December the 4th. Are you one of the exchange students? Yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to studying there. Do you know if their general science courses are anything like ours? It's not very likely. Actually, all basic general science courses are fairly similar. You'll find you're behind in some things and ahead in others. I wouldn't worry too much about the course. You'd be doing well on this one. Linda, have you finished your assignment yet? I'm nearly there. I should be able to give it to you on Monday. That's good. I can't let you have another extension. I was really grateful for the extra time you gave me. That was a really big assignment. Well, I'll expect it next week. Now, would you like to hear the details of the timetable? Oh, yes, please. I've just finished putting it on the notice board downstairs. Basically, you'll have four examinations. General Mechanics is in the morning of December 1st. Physics and Maths are on the afternoon of the same day. Communications and English are in the morning of December 2nd. And Earth Sciences in the afternoon. All over in two days. Yes. 
I'll miss teaching this class. You're all good at expressing your views, which makes for an interesting class. Some of the other first year classes won't talk, and they're rather boring to teach. That is the end of section three. You will now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section four. Section four. You will hear an extract from a talk about student health, and specifically about ways to avoid headaches. Listen to what the speaker says, and complete the summary. First, look at questions thirty to forty. As you listen to the talk, answer questions thirty to forty. Complete the summary. Use words from the box. There are more words in the box than you need. Some words may be used more than once. Hello, welcome to the student orientation program. Today's session is on health issues, and this talk is about headaches. And how to avoid them. It may surprise you to hear that headaches are often caused by hunger. In fact, one study suggested that 70% of headaches are related to hunger, which makes it the principal cause. The advice is simple: eat three meals a day and try to keep to a fairly regular schedule of meals. People associate noise with headaches, and for most of us, excessive noise creates the conditions for a headache. Very loud noise is unpleasant, and people usually remove themselves from it. Having said that, younger people tend to tolerate noise better than their elders, so I may be leaving noisy places far earlier than you. Just remember that exposure to too much noise may predispose you to a headache. Of course, we all associate headaches with studying. In fact, the headache probably doesn't come from the studying so much as from being tense. When we study hard, we often hunch over our work. Try raising your shoulders and tensing them, and now relax. Can you feel how much more comfortable a relaxed stance is? Another thing, it's very important to check that you are working in a good light. It will not actually hurt your eyes to work in a bad light. But it will make you tired very quickly, and it's very likely to give you a headache. What's more, if you have the book flat on a desk in front of you, it will be harder to read, and you'll have to hold your head at an odd angle. It is wise to have a book rest, which raises the material you are reading 45 degrees to the desk. This will help reduce your chance of a headache. Try to relax before bed. So that you will be relaxed when you try to sleep. A soak in a hot bath may be helpful. It's also important to really sleep when you go to bed. A good mattress is a wise investment for people who want to avoid headaches. This talk seems to keep coming back to tension. Tension may cause you to chew too forcefully, clench your jaw, or grind your teeth, and this, in turn, may lead to headaches. It is very easy to say that you shouldn't grind your teeth, and very hard to stop, particularly if you grind your teeth in your sleep. Try to avoid situations which will make you tense, particularly just before bed. If you do compulsively grind your teeth in your sleep, ask your dentist about a soft mouth guard. In general, try to eat regular meals and avoid tense situations. Be sure you get plenty of exercise. Hopefully, your headaches will be greatly reduced. One other thing I should point out: avoid smoky rooms and cars. Such places certainly encourage headaches, and the smoke may be doing you quite serious long-term damage. 
That is the end of section 4. Now you have some time to check your answers. That is the end of test 4. Thank you.